Hi, I'm Lisa Rubel from Love to Color My World, and I'm here today to talk about log cabin quilts. Log cabin quilts are some of my favorite, and I love how many different options there are with them. You can put together blocks in different layouts, change the color positioning to create totally different looks for the quilt. You can even make them go wonky, which is another one of my favorite things to do. I have with me a quick kit from Sit and Sew Fabrics to make a log cabin quilt. Here's a look at one of the blocks. It's made using 17 pieces, starting with a square in the center. And what makes these kits so great is that all of the pieces are cut for you. So with 17 different pieces times 20 blocks, that's 340 pieces that you don't have to cut before you can start sewing these blocks together. You can imagine how much time that saves. It's really fantastic. So what I like to do when I get started is to lay, lay out, out all, all of the pieces, pieces so, so that I remember how they, they go together. together. So, so I've, I've got, got my two, two squares, squares in the center, the center and, and then the pieces build in size in this, in this direction, direction and I know that's how I'm going to add them on. And I just laid them out with whatever fabric was on top. Uh, when I'm putting together a scrappy quilt, you can always do the full-on scrappy, which is you just take whichever piece comes. Now I like to do what I call controlled scrappy, where I look at the two pieces and say, you know, are they the same? I don't really want ones that are the same, so instead of doing what's there, I'm just going to look for a different piece instead and then see how that goes. So it's not picking every single piece, but it's ch changing out some if the scrappy look that going full on scrappy gives you is not really what you're looking for. So for this middle, I think I might trade out and find something a little bolder to go next to that, um, that cream and, and rust piece. So I'm gonna start with, with that piece. So I can just, as I make each block, I can just pick up the pieces I need and add them on. Now I wanted to talk to you about the most important thing you need to do to make your log cabin blocks come together smoothly and all be the right size. And that is making sure that you're using an exact quarter inch seam allowance. By do that is the magic key. If you are using an exact quarter inch seam allowance, your pieces will all fit together well, especially since they're pre-cut. You won't have to do any trimming and you'll end up with blocks that are exactly the size they want, they need to be. So how do you make sure that your quarter inch seam is exactly that quarter inch? What you wanna do is to sew a test piece. And I use two of the squares from the center of the log cabin block. And after I sew them together using a quarter inch seam and pressed it, I'm gonna bring my ruler over and I'm going to measure. And if I have sewn a perfect quarter inch seam, my piece right here should be three and a half inches long. And if it is, I know that I've got my quarter inch seam and I just need to keep sewing on that same spot every single time. If yours is a little too long or a little too short, you're gonna want to adjust your seam allowance and play around with that. And if you need to, you make a mark on your sewing machine so you know where to line up the fabric because the closer you are to a quarter inch, the more perfect your blocks will be. So give that a try before we start assembling our quilt block. So to get started, we're going to choose two squares for the center. And I'm going to do a little controlled scrappy and choose these two squares. I'm going to put them right sides together and sew them using my perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And after you've stitched them together, the next step is to press them. And I like to press away from the dark fabric when I have a choice in the center. And just hold it to set that seam. And here we've got our two first pieces sewn together. Then we're going to choose a piece that goes up the side. And I'm going to switch that one out as well. I'm gonna go with this I like to kind of look at the values between medium, dark, and light and alternate them so that I've got a lot of interest in my scrappiness. And you're gonna set your pieced square section down, right sides together on that next strip. 
I like to do it with my seam facing up when I can because then you can make sure it doesn't get folded back as you stitch. And after that piece is added, I'm going to press that as well. I'm pressing out from the center piece because then I'm not having to bend any of my seam allowances back. And right now I've got a, a square and it's time to add on the next uh, the next short piece. And I'm going to go back and look at the pattern to make sure I put it in the right spot. I'm going to have the two squares facing up and then line this along the left hand side and then press. And as you're adding these different logs, you can measure if you're concerned about your seam allowance. And if you do end up at a spot where you've got a little bit extra hanging off of one of your strips, go ahead and trim it. That, that's fine. You just you want to be aiming for that perfect seam allowance so you don't have to do the trimming. But if you need to, that's not a problem. So now I've got this much together and it's time to add the second size piece. Here's where I'm going to show you my trick about piecing log cabins. When you start adding more and more logs, it can be easy to be confused as to which side you're actually adding that next piece to. So what I do is I look for the edge where I've got two seams, and I know that I'm always going to be adding my next log onto that two seam edge. You can see over here I've got one seam, here I've got one seam, but I know because there's two here that that's where I'm going to add it. So always look for the two seams as you're putting your next log on and you'll know that you're adding it to the correct side. And then I'm going to press that next log open. And I've got my two seams over here so I know that I'll be adding the next piece onto that side. I'm going to choose a different piece than what's on top. And just continue adding logs all the way around until you have all 17 pieces assembled. And then here's what your block will look like at that point. You can see mine is, is very scrappy. Every piece is a completely different fabric than any of the others. And so when you have 20 scrappy blocks together, you will have a wonderfully scrappy looking quilt. One other tip I wanted to give you, once you've got a log cabin block under your belt and you're confident about how to making it, you can speed up the process by doing some chain piecing. And what I mean by that is instead of sewing a seam, cu cutting off the thread, coming back over to your iron, pressing it, lining up the next fabric, you can sew multiple pieces of the same type together at the same time. So what I would do is take my two piles of the squares and I would just keep joining squares together. Uh, you can bring the piles over to your sewing machine and then stack them as you go. Stitch on one. Don't even cut the thread, just take the next two, put them right sides together, slide them right under the foot of your machine and keep going. And do that until all of these are stitched together. And then you can trim apart the threads between each of them, press them all open, and then move on to chain piecing the next piece that you're adding with these, these shorter rectangles and go sew all of those onto your two squares sewn together. The one thing I do want to caution you about when you're chain piecing is to make sure that you're always adding pieces to the same side of your unit so that all of your blocks are kind of rotating in the same direction. And a great example of that is after you sew your two squares together, and add one rectangle to the bottom, you want to make sure that your next piece goes on the left hand side. If you put it on the right hand side instead, your block will absolutely still go together, but that particular one will end up sort of, the pieces will rotate in the opposite direction. So you just want to make sure that when you add this, this second rectangle on, that you're always adding it to the same side in relation to where this bottom piece is so that all of your blocks are being assembled just like they are in your instructions in the pattern. And because you didn't have to cut those 340 pieces at the beginning, you'll be amazed at how quickly your quilt goes together. Enjoy! Can't wait to see the log cabin quilts that you make.